Hello, everyone. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I am Daniel Goodwin, and over there is uh, Lewandowski. Our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker 2002, West Town Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585. It's cold right now. The ground has probably got ice on it. If you want to take your skates out and get them sharpened, just in case that may be our only mode of transportation for the week, Hockey Locker is your place to go. <laughs> All right. Today, the National Predators took on the Vegas Golden Knights, turning it over to John for the stat line. All right. Shots on goal in the first period. Nashville outshoots Vegas 8-5. to five. In the second period, Vegas outshoots Nashville 16-14. to 14. In the third period, Nashville outshoots Vegas 13 to 8. And in total, Nashville outshoots Vegas 35 to 29. Vegas was better on the faceoff at 62.7% to Nashville's 37.3%. Nashville goes 0 for 4 on the power play with four penalty minutes. And Vegas goes 0 for 2 with eight penalty minutes. Nashville out hit Vegas 48 to 21. Out blocked them 25 to 21. Nashville had five giveaways to Vegas's three, and Vegas had 11 takeaways to Nashville's 10. Uh, scoring in the first period at the 15 25 mark for Vegas was Stone scoring his 13th of the year, assisted by Dorofeyev, his sixth, and Haig, his seventh. Scoring in the second was Stone with his 14th with an assist from uh, Stevenson, his 14th, and Dorfiev, his 7th. Um, then Luca Evangelista scores on a deflection, um, his 9th with an assist from Alexander Carrier, his 10th, and Roman Yossi, his 29th. Evangelista has gotten a little bit of a slow start this year, but he has been heating up lately. Yeah. Um, having five goals in his last six games, or last nine games, sorry, last nine games. Five goals in the last nine games. Um, he has definitely been heating up lately. Then Stone gets the hat trick at the with his 15th with an assist from Stevenson, his 15th. Um... Uh, then in the third period, Marcia Shelton gets the empty netter. Uh, it was an icing. Uh, 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 Petrangelo and Wah on the. Uh, is it Wah or is it Roy? Who never knows. Um, not in this sport. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but the Preds fall four to one. Um, they meet back up on February 20th for their second of three meetings um, in Vegas. Um, you know, Nashville played very well. It was just that Vegas was one step ahead of them every step of the way. Yeah. Everything they tried. I mean, Vegas gave them the outside all day long, which is why there is a boatload of block shots. Um. And giveaways. Right. Um, you know, um, they're very responsible penalty kill wise, Vegas. Um just I watched a lot of that. Um or I watched this whole game. So yeah, there's there's a lot of that. Um this is actually the first game I've watched in a while. Maybe y'all can convince me to stop watching and just wing it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Watch the highlights after. Um but uh no, I I do think that uh um Nashville played well. Stone just had a really good night. Um uh we will be back on Friday evening, uh given that uh the uh game on Thursday it, it's just too late. It's at a uh a nine thirty puck drop. That that is not going, you know, to go well with us. All right. We got going on. So, um, with that being said, um, we will be here all weekend. No, 
So, um, uh, to those of you from the uh, Wisconsin area, stay warm and go pack. Uh, for those of you on the East Coast, congratulations to Buffalo. They uh, handled uh, Pittsburgh. The NFL playoffs are going, so congratulations to all teams who are moving on. Yes, that even beats you fellows and gals in Detroit. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, but um, looking forward, we do have uh the Texas Stars both Friday and Saturday this weekend. Uh, big, big, big series right there of games for the Admirals. Um, they they need that. Um, Texas has been on a slide lately, uh, losing three straight to Chicago. So, um, yeah, that, and then the next week we've got, uh, Belleville. Is that Rockford, Chicago, and San Diego to end it out? I think. Can't see that far. Um, so going on that, um, uh, do, do, do. Eh. Elvis Merzlikens has requested a trade from the Blue Jackets. That was just posted. Yeah. Um, Columbus is 14, 21, and 9, but 37 points in their last 10. They are 3, 4, and 3. Um, at Holden, they're 9, 12, and 4. With a differential of minus 31. Um... The only team worse is San Jose at minus ninety or well minus ninety three. So the bottom dwellers in each division. San Jose is minus ninety three on their differential. Chicago's minus sixty one. Uh, Columbus is minus thirty one, and Ottawa is minus thirteen. Actually, Montreal is worse than Ottawa in the differential at twenty nine, but they have a better record than Ottawa. Yeah. They've also played more games than Ottawa. Um, what would your thoughts being, um, you know, the starting goaltender of a team like that, of Columbus, who, to the looks of it, um, you know, they went to get Johnny Gaudreau, they spent all this money, um, team-wise, uh, You you've got okay, so you got Johnny Gaudreau. You have a top player in Kent Johnson. You have Patrick Line, uh, Jack Roslovic. You have uh, David Yurk, Yurk, Ivan Provorov, and Zach Wierenski, all top defensive players. Um, Elvis Mishlikins obviously requested a trade. Your other goalies are Daniil Tarasov and Spencer Martin in your system. Um, looking at that, what would your perspective be on, if you're looking at that team, I mean, I know they probably should blow it up and just start trying to build from scratch. All right. I mean, I think they're frustrated be because things haven't been going the way they thought they'd go, and it's not been just this season. It's no, been the but last, last season too. Yeah. So you know, and, they and need to figure out what they need to do to either move on or um or get things moving in the right direction. Well, I think you. I think the the, the first thing I would look at is possibly moving Line A. Just based on the line, Line A has not lived up to the hype that Line A. 
let, let's just be honest there. Right. The Lion A experience is not been a good one for teams who have had him. You know, and, and, and to be truthful, that Lion A trade between Winnipeg and Columbus, that didn't work out for either one of them because Dubois is over in L.A. now. Right. And he didn't want to be there. He didn't want to be, you know, I, I, I'm starting to see this this trend right now where guys don't want to be where they're rebuilding and they all want to go to where they're winning and the cap is so dang tight and everybody wants so much money. You know, um, it's, it's, it's an interesting situation to be in for them. Um, cap wise, I don't know what their situation looks like. I, I think that's one of the nice, interesting things, um, uh, is websites out here like Cap Friendly. All right. Uh, Columbus is 2.9 million in available cap space projected. Okay. Nashville has seven. Buffalo has eight. Anaheim has eight. Chicago has eight projected cap space. Currently, current cap space that Nashville has, just currently, is 15 million. Columbus is at 5.8. So cap wise, uh, cap wise, they've got a lot of money tied up trying to figure things out, and it's still not going the way they'd like. Yeah, if you owe Johnny Gaudreau 10 million until. That was not what I meant to do. <laughs> um, it's looking like 2028, 2029. 9.7 million cap it. This year also, you got to pay Jack Roslick, who's going to be a UFA, Alexander Tishier, who's going to be an RFA with restrictions. Um, you gotta pay Jake Bean. Uh, Damon Sever said I forgot about him. He's getting paid about six point two. Okay. Um, Elvis Mizlik is with the request at five point four million cap it for a goalie. Um, their injured reserve list is Boone Jenner, their captain, Patrick Lyde, and, and Zachary Wierenski. Um, in their cap, in their injured reserve, they have $22.8 in cap. Just in their injured reserve. Right. And in their dead cap, they have Alex Weinberg, um, eight, 891000 until 2025-26. That is the last year. That's on the books. Um, looking at their prospects, um, Jack Grave, Graves, Greaves, I think it's pronounced Greaves. Um, it's been a while since I've seen him, uh, because we don't play, um, uh, Cleveland all that much. Right. Um, his contract's up, and I, I, I do think that that is a good option for them to replace Merce Leakins. Um, I think that Spencer Martin is not the option for that. Um, let Daniel Tarasov and and uh, Graves, the young goalies, kind of battle for the future there. Um, there is a no movement clause, so he can veto the trade at any time. That is also a. I, I don't know if that's a. A situation I'm actually looking at. That I would be happy. One, two, what teams are looking for a goaltender that's about middle of the pack getting paid five million? What, you got Toronto maybe? Right. Like Toronto don't got the cap space, so you're gonna be eating cap coming back the other way. Yeah. Or you're gonna be like a um they're gonna have to bring in a third team to eat cap, and they're just gonna get prospects and picks. Right. 
because they're eating cap. You know? So, um, we got... When is that? That is something me and you should start trying to focus again on. All right. The NHL trade deadline is March 8th. That is a Friday. If I remember correctly. Yeah, it is. It ends at one at three p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So what? One hours? Two. Two. Okay. So <clears throat> we look into that. And you know the 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 trade deadline coming up. Um, recent trades, uh, Buffalo got uh, uh, traded somebody for future considerations. Uh, obviously, we all know the Carter uh, Cutter Gutierrez for Jamie Drysdale in a second round pick in 25. Um, we know about that trade. That trade's been talked about. Um, uh, with the guy saying he didn't want to play for the Flyers. Um, on a basis, it, it's kind of like this, okay? If I'm an athlete and I'm going to be traded somewhere right now, if I'm in the NFL, I do not want to go to Dallas. Um, there's too much going on there, and that's just kind of it. I'm not going to get too much into it. If it's all sports-related, I don't want to go to Philly. Their fans are brutal to their own team, and they're even worse to their opponents. So why would you want to play in that? kind of hostile environment. It's kind of like playing in New York where you know the spotlight's on you every waking moment. All right. You know, um, it's the same thing with L.A. The spotlight's on you. Yeah. So, you know, there, there are places where I, I, I personally would not want to play. Um... What do you think um, of of players like this? Because we've seen this in the past where players like um, Eli Manning uh, got traded at the draft after getting picked. Um, literally saying, I'm not going to play for you. I'm not even going to sign. I'll hold out. You know? Mm -hmm. Um started to see a little bit of that in hockey um more and more um the Brad saw it with um uh Jimmy VC Jimmy VC re refused to play for the predators um that was that was a thing like you know, the Nashville organization and the fans and everybody were excited to watch him come in. And he's going, oh, I refuse to play for you because I'm going to say you're going to send me to Milwaukee to start the year to help them with the playoff run when I want to be in the NHL. Nashville was going to miss the playoffs, so you're going to play for a week and go get them down anyway. Why waste a, week, uh, a year of your NHL contract? That's the way the NA Nashville GMs probably looked at it. The way I'd have looked at it, if I was a GM, 
Yeah. Go sign him to a amateur trial contract. Get him moving. Get him acclimated with the the system. And if he wants to play, he can play. Um, I think that same year, um, Bernie Jeffrey on or Blake Jeffrey, Blake Jeffrey on got traded that year. Um, just, it's kind of curious to see how things are are, are turning out. Um, second of all, Corey Perry, where would you sign him? Not that you would, but if you were an NHL team right now, um, and it's this time of year, Corey Perry does have some upsides. He does bring a bit of grit to a game, a little bit of physicality. He can still score, um, if you're a team, um, oh, where's the best fit? And how do you handle the backlash coming from it? Because it's going to be back. It would be interesting to see him go to Arizona. I, I do think Arizona needs that veteran. I, I, Arizona is one of those. Arizona. Um, as much as it pains me, but um, Nashville's messing some grit. Um, not that I want that kind of a headache. Um, I've had that in the past with, uh, what was that? We had that with Ribeiro. Yeah. Um, which... <clears throat> I've always had something to say about that. It's one of those things where, like, guys get put into, say, player assistance, right, in Nashville. And say it's for alcohol. When you send them on conditioning to Milwaukee, the beer capital of the <laughs> world, yeah, let's let's just go send them to a place where there's a like five bars on every block. Hmm. You know, um, it's it's just one of those interesting it's it's the knock on our city. It's it's not even knock on Nashville, it's a knock on us. But at the same time, we have to be a good organization and 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 kind of deter from that. Um you know, uh uh, so we're also halfway through the season. Yeah. Who on the Admirals has surprised you the most this year? Mm. I would say Gurianov, but he's up in Nashville now. Yeah. Like, he'd probably be the one that surprised me the most. Yeah, I mean, he he kind of had it rough the last couple of years. Yeah, and and Nashville's doing the best they can with that situation. Um, mine would be Fedor Shvetskov. I mean, he's averaging a point per game, right? As a rookie, he he's kind of giving me Parson in vibes. But I think Parson went up a little too quick. Yeah, I, I feel that too. There's growing pains there now. There He is still waiver exempt. So that is one interesting factor that Parson could get swapped out. Right. Um, As well as Tomasino. I think he's got three games before they can do that. So um, I wouldn't be surprised to see Barry shuffle the deck a little. Right. Um, obviously, we all know the big question is Saros and Yara. Right. If you had to choose. That's tough, because most years I'd say Saros, but surprisingly this year I'd say Yara. I'd say Yara has just had something. Saros has just had something going on this year. 
Well, that's where I was also. I, I come at it from two perspectives. I come at it from a longevity. What are you gonna, who are you going to get the longer term out of? Right. And competitiveness and battle ability. Yarrow takes the edge in those. Saros hasn't shown that he can battle. And Nashville, if they keep downtrending, there's another goalie that could be ending up on the block. And okay. it ain't Yarrow. Because his contract's up in two years, and he's going to want that that Halibut style money where Halibut's getting paid $9 million. All right. And to me, to be honest, without winning a Vesna, you're not worth $9 million. Without winning a Cup, you're not worth $9 million as a tender. All right. Nashville doesn't want what I hate to say my team's problems, Ben. The Avs um, of a revolving door of goalies. It just they don't want that. I mean, they had Pekka for so long, and Saros has been so great, and now we have Yaro, who's great. But you just don't want to get in that revolving door of goalies. No, you don't, but you also don't want to lose your star goalie like Colorado did for nothing. Right. Yeah. Because, um, you know, uh, ask, a, ask a Blackhawks fan uh, how they felt about the Dominic Hasek trade looking back. And uh, right. almost every single one of them are going to be like, oh, that's that's like the Dallas trade with when Jerry Jones took over and started firing people um, um, with Minnesota. And he traded all these people and traded one guy for all these people and it did not work out well in Iota for Minnesota. Yeah. Um, Dallas went on to win championships and two years later they fire their head coach which as I personally laugh at and believe they're cursed. It's like the Babe Ruth curse. Yeah. Um, or or you could just take the, well, the star off their helmet and throw a Maple Leafs logo on the side but you know... It's just the Toronto Maple Leafs of football where mm-hmm. they have all this hype around them all season long. And then when it comes to the playoffs, they fold quicker than a dude bluffing in Texas Hold'em. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, it's just one of those situations where in this, where do you see, like, because, like, I know we, we only got a little bit of time left. Uh, so we're going to go there. Where do you see Toronto's problem? I don't know enough about Toronto's problem. I know they've had a lot of problems recently with everything, but I don't know enough about it to speak on it. Well, Toronto, standing-wise, is third in their division. They're 21-12-8. and eight. In their last 10, they're 4-4-2. Four, four, um... They said they just extended Nylander to an in, insane contract. Um, obviously, um, hang on, let's take a look here. Yeah, they're they're dead last in cap. Dead last. It's so bad that Austin Matthews next year will be making thirteen million. Tavares will be on the end of his contract next year. Mitch Marner will be on the end of his contract next year. Nylander and Matthews are sticking around until twenty seven twenty eight. They have Morgan Riley at seven point five. T.J. Brody's probably gone after this season. Mark Giordano's probably going to retire after this season at 40. Um, You have Ilya Samsonov and Martin Jones, both your goaltenders. Contracts are up at the end of this year. Um, Jake Muzzin, your contract's up at the end of this year. Matt Murray's contract's up at the end of this year. John Klingberg's contract's up at the end of this year. 
that's 14 million in just cap right there gone. Yeah. Um they don't have the pieces to replace them. No, right. The goaltending is atrocious. Um they finish fifth in goal or fifth in defensive stats at the current moment, and that's in their division. A division with Boston, Florida, Detroit, and Tampa Bay around them. Um, the differential is a plus 14 at the current moment. Um, one of the interesting things I've been curious to. Uh, president is Brandon Shanahan. Senior advisor to the general manager is Shane Doan. Um, the general manager, uh, Brad Traveling. Their head coach is Sheldon Keith, with assistant coaches of Guy Boucher um, and Manny Mahaltra. The goalie coach is Curtis Sanford. Um, if Toronto doesn't start turning it around soon, um, and I do think this year is going to be kind of one of those, if you don't, you're going to bust very quickly. Yeah. Um, they have so many pieces that they need to move around right now, and they need you injected into that team. Right. That defensive side is so old, it's not even funny. They're, like... Giordano's 40. All right. Like, your top players are Giordano and TJ Brody. Now, I know that deep, like, uh, offense can win you games. Defense can lose you championships. That goaltending can lose you championships. Um... I think we'll go more into some of this stuff in the next coming days, but uh, we're going to cut it here. Um, I do think that uh, the league's in a little bit of a trouble. They've put a lot into um, trying to build the star power of Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner and all these guys. I, I, I just think that Toronto um, – Blood honesty is too many roosters in the head house. Uh, that's my opinion. Too many stars on one team. Um, you know, uh, uh, that's my personal opinion. Um, if I'm them, maybe I try and move on from like a Tavares, send him off to another t contender. Maybe like get a guy who's from the other the other way around. You know, middle right. center. Looking for go to get a team that's looking to move on that can eat some cap. You might have to send a few picks along the way, but that's fine. All right. Um. After uh, our shows this weekend, um, uh, I'm we're gonna run down uh, the Preds list this weekend, um, with the deadline coming up and who stays and who goes if they keep sliding type of thing. All right. So we'll see what happens. Uh, bring on LA on Thursday. So see y'all. Have a great day.